What's up guys, this is Corey here with Toothless Reptiles in San Diego. Um, I had a couple questions on people asking about diet and some other specific questions with cage setups. Um, more importantly, using floor tiles underneath your heating elements. Um, the biggest issue I have with floor tiles is that they have a good heat transference, but they don't have a large heat capacity. So. Um, they are a, uh, they're considered a good heat insulator. They use them on a lot of electrical equipment, like uh, the ceramic in general, not heating, uh, not ceramic tiles. But um, so basically, what happens is your your heat light is above your your let's say for your floor tiles. Well, yeah, the surface of your floor tile is going to get in the 130s, but the heat capacity is so low, especially in the in a platform that you would see on a floor tile that if you put your hand on it. Um, chances are you can put your hand on it a couple times and that heat will have transferred into your hand and there's not a lot of heat left in the tile. So um, you end up having a monitor that lays on your floor tiles and within a matter of minutes the heat that's in the floor tiles is gone and now that monitor is just being heated from its back. Um, which is not a good thing. I mean you would never encounter that in the wild. Um, so I always use natural stones. I mean this is a one inch thick piece of slate. Um, and I use other natural stones as well. I never use floor tiles, um, but this will hold heat for at least a half an hour. So even with the surface temperature, the same as any other any other tile at 130 degrees, when a monitor lays on it, they're going to be getting a lot of heat from underneath into their belly to aid with digestion. So um, that was the, that's the reason I don't use floor tiles. Yes, it is readily available. It was better than putting a piece of wood underneath it, but is it ideal? No, no, it's not. You know, it doesn't really work as well. Um, there's always there's a better way to do things. But um, so generally with the diet of these guys, I literally just keep crickets in the cage 24 hours a day. They'll end up chilling on the tops of these little things. So you can see them in there. Um, the crickets are in there all the time. And monitors are, are very sneaky. So chances are when you think your monitor's not eating, it actually is. So I keep crickets in there constantly. I'll fill up a bowl with mealworms every now and again, and I introduce other types of food throughout the week, whether it's all natural dog food, um, ground turkey, I'll split uh, hard boiled eggs in half and put those in there. Um, if you're worried about your monitor eating and you're using soft foods like turkey and, and dog food, make sure to roll it up into a ball and then you'll actually be able to know whether your monitor ate some because obviously it won't be a ball anymore. Um, but that's basically all I do. So as soon as you have your cage set up, just like I have our um, hatchling setup videos telling you how to do, then you can um, just start feeding. Um, just like we always say, keep feeding. And that's basically it. You just wanna make sure you have food readily available for these guys constantly. When it comes to roaches, feed them in moderation. Um, roaches are really meant to be more of a treat maybe a couple times a month is fine but you definitely don't want to use it as a staple um as a hatchling it's not too much of an issue but it's uh you know it's generally if, if you can get them to eat other other things it's better to it's better to have a variety it helps um when they get older as well but um yeah we have i think 10 or maybe nine of our 14 have hatched right now so they're they're running around hanging out what's up buddy these crazy little guys so you can see right out of the egg they're pretty pretty chill oh come here come here oh I got you no I don't got you no nope. but they're not skittish at all they're just kind of walking around the curious hanging out so pretty cool keep feeding